What is up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready to go today? It is uh, Wednesday, Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or watching on YouTube, uh, we got a really good uh, show for you today. Uh, I am excited. I've been wanting to uh, discuss this topic since these uh, things. I wish I could do a podcast every single day. There's so much content. Um, they, we, we struggle with that because uh, of our schedules and everything we're doing around here. But uh, man, I would do a podcast every day. Um, and before we get into our content, it's kind of wild because when I was doing radio, I didn't like the radio because of all the stuff that we had to adhere to, the rules and guidelines and all of that, uh, but we don't have that here. So um, welcome to the show. Today, uh, we are going to take a interesting look at a couple of things. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Twitter, Disney, Netflix, CNN, plus Arizona T. You might be thinking, is this about stocks? No, is this about, it's just about opinion and what's happening in business. But most importantly, it's about capitalism and something that I think is, uh, if you guys have been with me uh, for a while uh, or have listened uh, to why I'm doing this podcast, you'll know for sure that this uh, podcast is a way that I can kind of give you my thoughts and opinions. Here's my disclaimer. I want to hear everyone's opinions. I respect everyone's opinions because I'm not always right. 99.9% .9 of the time I'm right. I'm just kidding. But I'm not always right. I want to respect other people's opinions because I'm not from where they're from. I'm not them. I don't have their same experiences and, and beliefs and parents and grandparents. <clears throat> and even when you do have the same grandparents and parents, you have different beliefs. I, I differ from my siblings, uh, you know, that type of thing. So, um, yeah, let's kick this off. So let's talk about Twitter. As we know, Elon Musk has taken over Twitter. Now, the, the thing that I know for sure in a lot of these companies I'm going to talk about today is, yes, we are holding to the theme of capitalism. And I'm a capitalism guy. I'm capitalism over government. I'm low government, uh, not big government. I'm uh, um, alt center, if you will, alt middle, if you will. Uh, I probably lean a little bit to the right, but there's a lot of things that the left believes in that I believe as well. So I'm, but I'm alt middle. Matter of fact, I think 80% of the population around the, the country is alt middle, but for some reason, the media and uh, the powers that be, the politicians, have divided us this line of demarcation. You're either left or right. You're either red or blue. What? I can't be purple? I think I'm purple. And uh, I think a lot of people are purple. And I also think that when you say you're either one or the other, it lowers our ability to talk. It lowers our ability for communication. And that's a problem. That's why we cannot make progress uh, because we can't communicate. And I think if we are, because we're all one, we're all human beings, we're all the human race. Uh, we are not one or the other. Uh, we're purple. And uh, maybe that is the theme today. We're purple. Let's talk about Twitter. I like the fact that capitalism works in a way that there's risk and reward in everything that you do. Um, I like that. Uh, some people don't like that. Some people want security and safety. Uh, other people want it, you know, uh, maybe other ways. But I like it like that. I like everyone on their, their, their own. I like the, the risk side of things, calculated risk. I like the chance of learning as a youth. Uh, the ability to um, uh, create something and have risk in creating that and then bring it to the marketplace. And if nobody likes it, you fail. If everybody likes it, you win, you win big. And that's the, that's the thing I don't understand about today's society. It's set up 
for all like that. I know a lot of times we hear there's not an even playing ground, but go to other countries, go to other countries around the world. And you tell me if we don't have one of the most fair playing grounds, if not the fairest playing ground in the world for a capitalism type in, in, in making it as a success. That's why more people come here from all over the world. Stop with this nonsense that we're so messed up here in this country that we have it so bad. Travel, go to other countries, you will see it. You don't even need to travel that far. Uh, you will see how we are, are definitely in a much better position. With that being said, uh, Twitter and free speech and social media is really uh, changed the way we do things in business. And it's changed the way that we communicate as a society. I think it's interesting when platforms like Facebook, Twitter, uh, and so on, YouTube, uh, which we're on, uh, try to limit the speech. And guess what? They have the right to do that. They're a private company. They're publicly traded, but they're a private company. They can make those rules. Um, and the thing that I love about capitalism is when a company makes rules or makes decisions, it's up to the market to decide on whether that's going to be a success or a failure. I truly believe that uh, limiting speech uh, in any fashion is, uh, from a market perspective, never good. I think typically you limit speech because of an agenda. There's a lot of things that have happened over the last couple of years that are based on agenda. This is my personal opinion. This is just how I feel. I'm, I'm, again, this is the podcast that, or the reason this podcast is here so that I can give you my thoughts on this. When you take away the agenda, be it political or religious or anything else, and you get down to the X's and O's, and even though we're going to have differences, I believe that's where the progress can be made. Because discussion is a way and communication is a way that you can see other points of view. And I always try to put myself in a position to see other people's points of view. But when you limit that speech, uh, be it good or bad, you could think it's the most horrendous speech in the world. And when you limit it, you don't get a chance to do two things. Number one, take the evil side of perspective. I know as hard as that may sound, it's a good exercise to do. And number two, if it is truly wrong after you've looked at that perspective and sat in those shoes and been in that spot, you lose the ability to influence, convince, um, change, make progress. And that's why I don't like limiting free speech. So this idea of Twitter and Elon Musk coming in and making an offer uh, to buy Twitter through a stock takeover and a, an, an aggressive stock price. $46 uh, dollars a share, uh, $44 billion. He has the ability to do that and kudos for him. Uh, I think that this is a guy that is another guy that's alt middle. And uh, for lack of a better term, this idea of, of uh, uh, dividing, whether you're one or the other, red or blue, left or right, uh, you know, is really... Uh, changed his outlook on things. So when, as he started to get uh, censored on Twitter and other people as well, both on the left and the right, frankly, probably more on the right, but definitely there's been some things with the left as well. Uh, he took a stand and he put his money where his mouth is. Kudos for him. He could fail miserably. $44 billion for Twitter, a lot of money. He could have great success. The thing I love about Elon Musk, he puts it all on the line, whether it's PayPal, um, uh, SpaceX, whether it's Tesla, he puts it all on the line. Company CEOs that aren't willing to personal guarantee, that aren't willing to stand behind what they've done, especially when they've raised a ton of money, they're going to fail. I know they're going to fail because they're only thinking of themselves and not of all the people that stood behind them and supported them. So Elon Musk taking this was a risk, uh, making this offer was a risk and buying Twitter basically was a risk and possibly becoming the CEO, which I'm hearing today is a risk. But I think that's what leaders do. 
And uh, kudos for him. He could fail miserably. He could have great success. But I, I applaud. I applaud his his bravery and uh, courage in moving forward. The guy is is way smart. I, I, I'm just my opinion from what I listen to, and I've listened to a lot of him. And I think he does not give a shit about money. I, I'm telling you, he does not give a shit about money. The way he talks. Um, and spend a little time with him, reading him and his background and where he's at now. He doesn't even own a house. He couch surfs, couch surfs on, on friends' couches. This is the richest guy in the world. So um, I think he cares about helping people. I really do. And I think that it's a testament of that. Sure, people are, there's some haters of Elon Musk. There's a lot of haters of Elon Musk. I don't know why. I think it's got to do with this partisan scenario. But kudos for him. I think... Uh, uh, giving Twitter the ability to have the speech, free speech of everyone and taking people's perspective and sides is a good thing. As bad as that may be, you're going to have people on there that say really shitty things and really false things. Um, but I'd rather have the ability of letting the market dictate what that is. I don't want government to tell me what that is. I, I want the market to tell me what that is. I want to be able to make my own informed decision. And there's going to be failures. There's going to be people hurt. There's going to be money taken, I'm sure. But isn't that what's happening now with government? Isn't that what's happening now with um, the market in general right now? So I, I think it's a good move. Where it's going to go, I don't know. I feel like Elon Musk is a smart guy. I think he's a worker. This guy works a hundred hour weeks. I mean, I can't, I cannot judge the guy uh, negatively for that. I think he's going to hustle. And I, and I think his chances of putting something in place that's good uh, outweighs the part that's bad. I could be wrong, but uh, I think it's a good move. And I applaud that. Let's talk about Disney. Um, the don't say gay bill. First of all, uh, this is a very controversial thing for Florida and other states that are considering this. Basically, what is happening here in uh, the don't say uh, gay bill uh, is this. I'll just read it. This is an article from uh, ABC News. And this is has to do with Florida specifically. Uh, Florida, this was a couple, oh, you know, within the last week or two. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed the parental rights in education bill. It's dubbed the don't say gay bill by the critics, by the way. The bill bans classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade and states that any instruction on those topics cannot occur in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards, according to the legislation. That's House Bill 1557, for those keeping track. Um, we will make sure that parents can send their kids to school to get an education, not an indoctrination, DeSantis said before signing the bill Monday. The legislation states that the Florida Department of Education would have to update its standards in accordance with the requirements. Under the bill, parents can also decline any mental, emotional, or physical health standards available to their children at school. And schools will be required to notify parents of the child's use of school health services unless there's a reason to not believe that disclosure would be subject to the students, a student to abuse, abandonment, or neglect. Parents could sue their school district if they believe there's a violation of any of these requirements or restrictions. The bill is expected to go into effect July 1st. So that's a couple of months off. Um, let me just kind of give you my thoughts there. Just my opinion. And again, this is open for discussion. This is just how I feel. Again, I'm a, I'm a less government guy is better. I'm less government into our, uh, our, our own business, uh, our own pocketbooks, uh, our own families. Um, so anytime I have a choice to decide, do I want the government involved in any way? or the government not involved, I'm probably going to lean towards the government not being involved. I wouldn't want the government talking to my kids in heterosexual things, you know, let alone anything else uh, with that. I don't think they can do as good a job as the parents. Just my personal opinion there. And I think that there could be a chance for this 
agenda, this indoctrination. Now, with that being said, is there uh, room for families and parents and and uh, adolescents of appropriate age to be thinking about and discussing sexuality for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's heterosexual, homosexual, uh, the trans community, LBG, any of that, any of that, it should be discussed. I respect it all. I want everybody. You are what you are. I truly believe that. Um, I don't, I, I believe you are, you don't choose to be a uh, homosexual. That's how you are. I believe that is, is what's happening in uh, both DNA and, and environment and all of that. So I want to respect that. And I want to respect the, the, the people that have different beliefs with that. So I'm all for it. Trans, uh, gay, I have to be because it's human. It's just being human. So I'm all for it. I just don't want the government involved in uh, uh, teaching that or, or indoctrination of that uh, and things like that. I would like to have parents and I would like to have society accept those things more. I would like, to, I'll say that again. I would like to have society accept those things more. Homosexual, tr the trans community, um, because we won't grow as a human population. We can't make progress as people until we do. I just don't think government is the way to do that, be it in schools or anything else. I think that this should be uh, uh, more of a parental uh, decision. And I also think this is more of a societal thing. This is something that we should want to do as people, not want to do as government. And um, again, my whole theme is less government is probably better in so many of these things. So um, when this came about, this is, this is Governor DeSantis's uh, approach and look, I don't agree with everything that maybe he has said, or I don't agree with everything that other people have said in this. This is just my opinion. But I also think that we should get together and talk a little bit more about this. Uh, we've turned this into too much of a um, political scenario. Again, more government. We don't need more government. We need people that are thinking clearly and, and be able to talk about this and have conversations at home. And be able to um, take perspective. And I think that's going to be where we grow as a, a people. We won't even be talking about, uh, you know, this stuff in the future. Hopefully this is just the norm that a gay uh, uh, couple that are having kids and, and uh, you know, all these other topics that have come out. It's just, I want it to be the norm that we're not even talking about it. Black and white. I want it to be the norm. We're not even talking about that stuff because it's just the norm. We're just people. Uh, I just don't believe government should be delivering that. So the backlash on that was uh, why I want to talk about Disney. Disney uh, definitely is, is fighting back on that. Uh, they, the employees stage a walkout to demand action against this bill. Um, and so Disney is taking a stand. Now, again, the, the wonderful thing about capitalism is the fact that um, you fail or, or succeed based on what happens in the market. If you're having bad practices, the market will know that and you'll get less business. Um, again, I want the market to dictate that, not government. So Disney, a corporation publicly traded, um, can make rules and make decisions and lean left or right. And the idea of that is they're going to have to face the consequences of what those decisions are. I don't know if you have seen um, this in the news about Disney stock and uh, their decision, but let's just see. Let's just see. I'm going to bring it up now. Um, let's just see the performance of this over the last uh, year to date. They were at 156 on January 3rd, okay? January 3rd, 156. Today, they're at 113. Now, all stocks have gone down in that period, pretty much. I just want to kind of be clear on that. But could this be a repercussion of the market is saying, hey, 
We agree with the fact that we don't want government to talk about this stuff for third graders and below, like the bill says in Florida and other states as well. I don't know. It's up for discussion. But again, uh, I think it's interesting that capitalism, the market is gonna not going to lie to you. It's going to tell you exactly what it wants, exactly what it likes, and exactly what it doesn't like. And I think part of this has to be uh, attributed to that. Um, because if you think about coming out of COVID, places like Disney would be on the upswing, and that's not happening. Even though the majority of stocks have gone down since the beginning of the year, uh, that is not happening with Disney, and I think that that has to do with what we've been talking about here. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the, the stock uh, sequence on the board here, but uh, if you're not, just note that it has gone down significantly, like 28% uh, year to date because of that. Okay, that's Disney. They've taken a different approach to that. And respectful, I, I get it. You can do whatever you want. That's capitalism, but the market is going to dictate that. Again, more capitalism, less government. I can't think of too many things besides, you know, uh, starting the country and, and providing us with the freedoms that we have here today. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm just talking about the plays of government. They haven't been too successful when they've gotten involved in people's lives. Look at Social Security, look at Medicare, look at Medicaid, look at all of the things that are, are a disaster today. Um, I know they've helped people to the point, but financially they're a disaster. Other decisions have been a disaster. Um, so the debt. Look at the debt. We're If this was a company, we'd be bankrupt. If this was a family, we'd be bankrupt. We're a government that prints their own money based on uh, uh, several factors. As, as you know, if you've listened to this podcast, we we should be in more in trouble than we are if you look at our, our balance sheet and such. But we'll leave that for another podcast for sure. But Disney, interesting story there. Let's talk about Netflix. Let's talk about that and what has happened with that. That has been an interesting story in the news as well. Um, Netflix has uh, done a couple of things. Now, let me let me kind of back up here. Um, Netflix, boom. Netflix is interesting because of its creation. Netflix is something that uh, has um, changed over the years. Uh, let's go back to Blockbuster. Did you know that Netflix came to Blockbuster and said, hey, we're this new service. It's going to be a streaming service. Blockbuster said, uh, and, and we'd like you to have you consider buying us. So let's work together. They, they uh, made a terrible mistake because they said, look, we're Blockbuster. We don't know who Netflix is, but we're Blockbuster. And um, we are way bigger than you, way more successful to, than you. And thanks, but no thanks. We want nothing to do with you. <laughs> Obviously, you know what happened? Blockbuster went out of business. I think there's one store left in Wisconsin, but they went out of business and I like Blockbuster. Wayne Izinga was the CEO. I love that guy. I think he's fantastic. But obviously, Netflix took off and this huge, huge company and has had great success. But part of their success has been this subscriber service. And what's interesting about this subscriber service is they have lost a ton of of uh, subscribers, or subscribers over a period of time over the last like four or five months. And there's several reasons for that. Netflix makes a lot of money. They have a great subscriber network and they came out and they decided to be a little bit more tough on their subscribers by a few different ways. This is just one part of the story, by the way. There's several parts, but one part. Netflix came out and said, hey, we understand there's maybe a, a sharing of accounts and passwords. We're going to crack down on you in a big way and, and, and uh, you know, start really cracking down. Even criminal, they talked about criminal activity. Well, they started to lose subscribers because of that language. Um, and as of 
uh, today, this morning, there's a report that Netflix accused of misleading investors prior to subscriber loss. Uh, but they expect to lose another 2 million subscribers in the second quarter. Now, if you look at Netflix and how they make their money, they make their money based on subscribers. And when they lose these subscribers, they can't capitalize, if you will, uh, cap rate that income coming in. So they lose valuation of their company, just like a commercial real estate, if you've heard me talk about that before. But Netflix investors have filed a class action lawsuit accusing the streaming behemoth of making false and misleading statements about its business operations and prospects after it reported a loss of 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2022. Again, that's happening because of this, uh, the language that Netflix came out with, I believe. It's their decision and this is the repercussions. Capitalism, the market never lies. But according to this complaint filed in the United States District Court of Northern District of California on Tuesday, the group of investors purchased or otherwise acquired Netflix common stock or call options or sold put options, maybe put, meaning they felt like the stock was going down between October 19th, 2021 and April 19th of 2022. They allege that Netflix artificially inflated the price of its common stock and violated the Securities and Exchange Act of 1934. So this was another issue. They had tough language over, uh, they felt like they were losing money because they didn't have this, all the subscribers they want. They come out with strong language. And then on the other side, they're kind of misstating their valuations of stock to their investors. Again, these are decisions that they've made corporately. You can see what has happened with their stock uh, recently. If I look at what has happened on the Netflix stock. Let me just pull that up uh, here so you can see that. Netflix stock, boom. Uh, if you look, it's gone down about 11% uh, today. 11% uh, today. If you look at year to date, it's gone down 68% year to date. Again, capitalism, decisions that it makes, and what has happened. I love this. I don't want any company to go down in valuation. I, I feel for the shareholders and such, but I love this risk. I love this ability for the market to dictate what's going on, not government. The market is going to dictate what's going on. If they like your product or service, they'll buy more. Valuation rises. If they don't like your product or service, your valuation will go down. That's it. I would like less government, more capitalism. And uh, I think the cream will rise to the top in that case. So anyway, check that out. I think you'll you'll dig that. Uh, let's do just a couple more. CNN Plus, um, I wanted to bring this up just because this goes back to uh, this idea of what I've been talking about with uh, bipartisanship and, and uh, left or right, red or blue. Now, I don't watch Fox News. I don't watch CNN. Let me just state that. Have I watched it in the past? For sure. I've watched both of them to get both perspectives of sides. You should be doing that as well if you're going to be talking about Fox News or talking about CNN or CNN Plus. You should at least understand their platforms. Um, I don't believe that this is news today. I believe this is opinion and these are influential channels to push agenda. And this is also on both sides now, not one or the other. I'm not left or right. I'm not red or blue, I'm purple. So in one or the other here, Fox News and CNN, these are agenda pushers. I wouldn't waste your time on that unless you're getting your sources from other angles and you're looking at all the sources uh, because I think you can't make a decision on something until you've taken the position or perspective of all sides and, and had more of a judicial uh, uh, approach to this and where you're looking at all sides, not just one. Uh, so I want to point that out. But let's talk about CNN Plus. This was a streaming service. Streaming services are really tough because of what's going on in that particular market. We just talked about Netflix 
But CNN Plus started to, uh, they spent $300 million and uh, they came out in 2022. Uh, they thought this was going to grow into a billion dollar plus uh, streaming service. And it just didn't take hold. The reason I'm, I'm not picking on CNN, but the reason I'm picking, I, I am bringing this up again is because it's the capitalism approach, capitalistic approach of CNN being left, uh, definitely a left pushing agenda. And again, I'm not beating up on CNN. I'm talking corporately now and I'm talking what their, their rules, agenda and mission is. I, if Fox did this and failed, I would be talking about Fox, okay, Fox News. Uh, but CNN did this and they thought it was going to be huge. They came out to market in a streaming service thinking that people would pay for uh, this type of an agenda on a streaming service. And the market obviously said, we want nothing to do with this because they failed miserably. They burned $300 million. Uh, so it was a big hit to CNN. And I, again, I respect that. I, I would have rather wanted to see that work out for CNN, CNN Plus. I want all businesses to work out, just like I want it to work out for, for Twitter and Elon Musk. Uh, but again, it's the market dictating that. And take the lesson of that. And that's the lesson of this podcast is the market is going to dictate success, good and bad. Uh, so uh, I thought that was interesting in the news as well. And then just one, one more here. Let's go. We talked about CNN Plus. Again, I'm not beating up on anybody. If it was Fox News, I'd be talking about them. One more. Let's talk about uh, something you may not expect me to be talking about. Let's talk about uh, Arizona tea. Okay. Let's talk about Arizona tea. And... Um, a couple of things here with Arizona tea that I, I think is interesting. This is again about the corporateness of this. Uh, and, and this is a business decision. First of all, full disclaimer, if you've drank an Arizona tea in a while, they're very, very sweet, very sweet. Um, if you have, but I'm trying to cut out the sugar and the sweetness. So I'm trying to stay away from this stuff, but there are pretty good, but a lot of sugar. If you don't like a lot of sugar, you probably won't like this. But Arizona Tea Founder says, the, these are 99 cents, by the way. If you go to any convenience store or gas station convenience store or any store in general, you will you can pick these up for 99 cents. They're, they're rather large cans. I think they're, I forget how many ounces they are, 16 or 23 ounces. They're 23 ounces anyway. They're 99 cents for 23 ounces, pretty good price. But we have inflation going on. But watch this. This is a decision that Arizona Tea made. Uh, Arizona Ice Tea founder says the 99 cent price tag will stay the same. And I want, I'm pointing this out because this is a capitalistic decision and they may survive or fail based on this. Uh, so in times of uncertainty, we can always rely on one constant, the price of Arizona Tea. Arizona Beverages chairman and co-founder Don Voltaggio knows the value of relationship. This shrewd understanding, he said in, in uh, he, sorry, he told Today Food in an interview is why despite recently witnessing inflation rates hitting a 40 year high, he sold his iced tea drinks at the same exact price for years, 99 cents. Best known for its cherry blossom aesthetic Hefty 23 ounce size and reliable 99 cent price tag. Arizona tea is one of those gas station staples who, whose prices make sure it's uh, sure and sound go to like your mom's lasagna or rhythms of old faithful. It's now a viral article published last week. The LA Times posed the question as inflation source, how is Arizona iced tea still 99 cents? Now watch this. Today, uh, sorry, to me, the worst day as a salesman is to go into a retailer and say, hey, or, hey, by the way, I'm raising the price on that can today, he explained in his interview with Today. Uh, for Voltaggio, um, and it might be Voltaggio, but I think it's Voltaggio, such changes have negative trickle-down effects. He's made a point 
to avoid. After all, an increase in price for a retailer means a change in what a consumer might purchase from them altogether. More, it might cause a a customer to overlook the tall, brilliant cans oft found in the refrigerated sections of bodegas, corner stores, and pharmacy chains in the future. Our point is that you want to what you want to do is have a customer come in and get a fair value on a can of tea or juice and then buy other things in your store to offset those costs. Again, this is the decision that they're making. I think it's interesting. Uh, I saw in here, I won't read the whole article to you, but I saw in here where um, uh, he said, yes, Prices have gone up. That means that we will just be making less profit in the future. So rather than pushing those high prices to consumers, he as a business is making the decision to say, we will just make less profit. Now, that's interesting. Now, this is where I'm, you know, everybody's like, well, how are you purple to the right? I think, you know, I've kind of given you some of my thoughts with that. Here's where I'm purple to the left. A little bit, where I think this is where a business uh, reputation and responsibility comes in. He's saying, "Look, I could raise prices with inflation and probably have people pay that, but I'm going to do what's right for my customers and clientele and the consumer, and I'm going to let the market judge me. I'm going to keep my prices the same. I'll just make less profit." I'll say that again. In the face of inflation, I'm going to keep my prices the same. I'm just going to make less profit as a company. I like that. Thinking of that, I like that. I think that's a decision that a company can make and be responsible to its consumers. I also like the way they state that. I like the way they position that. I also like how he put in this article, look, if I raise my price and I tell that retailer I'm raising my price, it might make their consumer come in and buy less other items or less of other items that they would normally buy in that store. It's a really good way of putting that. They're they're putting the consumer or actually their client's consumer first. And I do like that. So this was this was an example of uh, of today of in this podcast of how I think, again, I would rather let the market dictate what we do. I hope Arizona, I wish Arizona tea well. I I applaud them. I applaud them in that move. I wish Elon Musk well. I applaud them in that move. I applaud the the, uh, bravery and courage of uh, CNN Plus. I'm sorry that didn't work out, but I applaud you with that courage. And I also applaud uh, Disney in taking a stand. They believe that the don't say gay bill uh, is wrong. And uh, I applaud them for that. But let's sit down and have conversation on that because my opinion really doesn't matter a whole lot. But what does matter is the conglomerate, us as a society, us as Americans, and us as people and in humans. So as long as we can keep these conversations open, I think it'll be a good uh, avenue for progress. That, my friends, is it for the podcast today. We covered some cool stuff. I'm glad you spent some time with me. And uh, I don't know, I had a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this. And um, we've got some really cool topics and really cool guests. And we've also got some cool stuff happening in um, our podcast studio. This is not it, by the way. This is our 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 uh, uh, conference room, but it's our makeshift podcast studio. But uh, these are these are cool lights. These are going to go on our studio, and um, big changes coming. Not immediately, but big changes coming. I'm I'm excited to get in there and really sit and interview people that have per- different perspective than mine, and and uh, it can give value to you guys. So thank you again for joining the Real Rise podcast. Uh, I am excited to continue this. Uh, We will see everybody on the next Real Wise podcast. Stay safe out there. Happy Cinco de Mayo.